Whether you're a trader with an investment bank or a proprietary trader kept as a prop trader for shot over here, or in the treasury division of a large bank like Goldman Sachs or Wells Fargo, maybe you're a trader with a hedge fund, then what you need is market data. Updated information about stock prices, bond prices, commodity prices, and how asset flows, asset price movements are happening across the world. Traders in these organizations need real-time data because markets are lightning markets. Prices are extremely volatile and high-frequency trading has resulted into markets becoming extremely aggressive as well as automated. These global markets therefore have to have enough data transmission to the traders to enable them to make money. Hello everybody and welcome to this YouTube video on what is market data. I'm your learning partner Sushila Hariharan and if you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate actions, trade life cycle or OTC derivatives, do subscribe to my YouTube channel where I provide content rich, research centric content on these aspects. Let's understand the meaning of market data in this video. We're going to take a look at what is the concept of market data, why is it useful to investors and traders as, as well as dealers and investment banks and hedge funds. Let's understand how the dealers and the treasury division use the market data. And finally, let's understand the difference between level one and level two of market data. So let's understand how data is segregated in a market sense, okay? Here we're talking about financial markets. Data is basically classified and categorized into two specific uh, categories. The first one is market data, data that is related to the markets, okay? And the second categorization is static data. The static data refers to data that is issued or that is provided by the issuer with respect to the issuance or with respect to the security or the investment itself. What is market data? Market data refers to real-time prices of financial instruments. This market data is extremely useful to all the traders, hedgers, arbitragers, leveragers, dealers, and all the participants in the markets who are looking to make short-term gains in multiple assets, in multiple currencies across global markets. Market data is provided on stock prices, prices of equities or stocks across the world, it's also provided on commodity prices. How does the price of aluminium move? How does the price of steel move? How does the price of gold move? How does the price of crude affect the European markets as well as the Asian markets and so on? What about bond prices? You know, are they reflecting an interest rate expectation uh, with respect to a hike or a cut? As well as the foreign exchange rates. FX rate stands for foreign exchange rates over here. So market data refers to providing real-time prices of these instruments. Price itself is the point at which demand and supply meet. That's a given. Okay, thirty years ago, when you when we watched the when you know when we watched Harshad Mehta scam happening live, there was no market data. The market data was available to us at end of the day through something called the bow copy, okay? So now we have real-time data, and this real-time data is very crucial to make short-term profits as well as decisions at the spur of the moment. Market data is provided by market data providers, agencies and companies that are separate from the exchange on which it is traded. The recognized trading venues then release the market data. If you look at the flow of this market data, the market data providers provide the data to the trading venues and the trading venue then releases the data to the investors. For example, let's take a look at some of the market data providers who dominate the global financial markets. These are Reuters, Bloomberg, Moody's Analytics, etc. 
they provide uh, Reuters, for example, is the largest and the oldest, perhaps, provider of market data going back almost 50 years and providing data on almost 2 billion financial instruments across northern american markets european markets south american markets asian markets literally across the world bloomberg is also one of the dominant competitors to reuters and they also provide extremely sophisticated and fine pricing on some of these securities this data is released to the trading venues the tra a trading venue is a term that is used for recognized stock exchanges like NYSE, NSC, Euronext. It also refers to uh, OTC markets, which are recognized trading venues. Okay, so you need to know where you're getting your price from. Look, when I'm watching CNBC from my home, I'm getting the price with a few seconds delay. A trader who's working in a hedge fund cannot afford that delay because that price will already be lost if he was to put in a trading position after a few seconds. So the, the, the price that I am seeing sitting at home and watching CNBC.com is different from what a trader who has, uh, who's trading, who's employed as a trader with a hedge fund is seeing, okay? That's the difference between what, uh, that, that few seconds is the difference between what a hedge fund dealer can see and what me sitting at home can look at. The trading venue then releases the data to mutual funds, investment banks, hedge funds, etc. And depending on what package they take, they get level 1 or level 2 data. We're going to take a look at level 1, level 2 data as the video moves on. So what is the data that is provided by some of this market data uh, examples? Okay, I, this, this is not the universe of market data examples. Let's take a look at some things that is provided by the market data example. A ticker symbol okay a ticker symbol is not the ISIN the ISIN is used for settlements the ticker symbol is used for trading the stock exchange assigns a ticker to any stock every stock that is listed on the stock exchange okay for example on the US markets you have a ticker of AAPL can you guess which one this is the name is too obvious. It's obviously only one alphabet is missing and that's E. This is indeed the ticker for Apple. Another example would be MSFT and again quite obvious, quite easy to trade, quite easy for the traders to remember. This is Microsoft. Another example would be AMZN which is another few alphabets missing in but as soon as you see AMZN you will recognize that this is the ticker for Amazon. So tickers, unlike ISINs, are assigned by the stock exchange and they're not assigned by a securities numbering agency, okay, like an NNA. Uh, if you look at the Indian context, you might have some symbols which you want to try your luck at, okay? Post your comments, post your answers in the comment section below. SBIN, INFI, and ICICI Bank. These are some of the ticker symbols on NSC. I don't think it's very difficult to recognize which stocks these refer to. Okay, so market data you know, refers to data that is issued by the market as a concept, as opposed to data that is issued by the company. Okay, so the company issues data with reference to itself and its instruments, whereas market data is issued by the market on which it is trading. So then we may ask is INFY the same in both BSE and NSE which are the two dominant markets in the Indian context? Yes they are the same okay in both the markets. Uh, we don't want to create confusion in the traders mind and give different ticker symbols in the two different markets. Market data is the, also could be an example could be the latest bid price bid price is the price at which the counterparty is willing to buy the underlying asset in a quote driven market it will give both the bid price and the ask price the price at which the counterparty is willing to sell the underlying asset is the ask price let's jog our memory and see whether we remember many of these things from what we have seen in the earlier videos posted in foreign exchange or bond markets etc Okay, so let's look at an example of a bid and an ask. 
quotation that is given on the foreign exchange markets. I'm a dealer with, let's say, a you know, Hari Hedge Fund, and I see a quote of USD slash EUR, which gives me a rate of 1.0456 and uh, 61. Now, this quote could be deceiving unless you are trained to read market data like this. Uh, this basically means that the bid price or the price at which the counterparty is willing to buy one dollar is euro 1.0456 okay and the ask price at which the counterparty is willing to sell one dollar which is obviously going to be higher than the bid price is 1.0461 euros so the counterparty is going to buy usd at euro 1.0456 they're going to sell usd at 1.0461 there's about a spread of about five pips because traders are extremely busy people, they don't include the big figure, which is in this case 1.04. They only do pip trading. To understand pip trading better, please take a look at my video on um, foreign exchange trading, which has uh, great coverage about pip trading. Market data could also give us time of the last quotation. Remember, this is a millisecond market. Okay milli or even a micro millisecond market all right one thousandth of a second also can be a price that is given over here what is the time of the last quote price at which the last trade was concluded now, this is defined by the stock exchange as the ltp or the last traded price so the difference between quote and price over here is quote is an indication to buy or sell Price is what that is exactly traded at. So trades get concluded at prices. Price implies that a trade has been completed. Okay. So there could be like seven to eight quotes, but there could be only one price because the orders would not have got matched. It also talks about the transaction size or the volume of the last trade. So if you go to any of your apps like Zeroda or Money Control, you will find all these three data available to us literally free of cost okay because this is the data that we need to know to understand the price movements the volume sizes etc etc now the providers of market data are large huge agencies like bloomberg market moody's analytics reuters look in just the us markets okay the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq put together trades almost close to $8 trillion every day. All right. And that's a very large sum of money to be traded and have so many securities that are being talked about. Okay. In Indian context, we have NSC and VSE put together. They have about four and a half thousand stocks which are common. You add the ones that are listed only on VSC or the ones that are listed only on NSC. And we have another 3,000, so you have close to 7,000 stocks that are getting listed. And this is only the stock market. Add to that, you have commodities, you have bonds, you have a foreign exchange. All this comes together to provide like almost 10 to 12 million data points every day. And that is provided by these agencies. So then what is the meaning of static data? Static data is data that does not change in real time and is normally data that is given by the issuer examples of static data could be many in nature okay and typically if you're going for an interview they're going to ask you what is static data and you it's very simple that as opposed to market data you have static data which does not change in real time for example the stock exchange that the trade took place on let's say the trade was concluded on nasdaq it can't change overnight okay so that's static data it uh, securities identify like ISI and don't change in real time. In fact, they hardly ever change. All right, ISINs change only if there is a corporate restructuring activity like a merger or a split, uh, which has happened wherein the, the the character of the underlying equity has changed. Only then ISINs can change. The static data could also be name and address of the company that's issuing the security. Generally, if the company is a hale and hearty company and is not run by, uh, you know, uh, scrupulous uh, issuers and promoters and founders who want to take your money and run away with it, 
then generally this remains steady for a long period of time. Uh, coupon payment dates, again, if a company is doing well and its bond issuance has been a success and is using the money properly, they're generating profits out of the money that's being used, then of course it would be able to pay payments on time. The coupon payment dates would be semi-annual, quarterly, annual, and these would be actual dates that are mentioned. Also, the bond redemption date would be example of how static data would be announced. Uh, coming back to market data, market data is provided by these agencies like Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, as well as markets, etc. at two levels. Level 1 market data is basic real-time data on different security codes. It's mostly used by long-term investors and not day traders like people like me and you watching it on uh, different apps or uh, my parents and your parents sitting and watching it on television channels is all level one data, data that comes to you with a lag. Okay, it gives you the best bid offer, what is the size of bid offer, and you have a general general idea about how the prices are moving, what's the direction of the movement, is there an interest for the investors on these stocks, etc. But this data is not enough at all for a trader in a hedge fund. A trader in a hedge fund, investment bank, dealing in treasuries and foreign exchange needs level two market data for which Payments are mandatory. Level 2 market data refers to understanding what is the size of the order book. Okay, the level 2 market data is also called as order book, which talks about how the prices are likely to be determined. Pending orders are not yet executed is also displayed. Now, this is a wealth of information. Okay. As, as a trader, as, as a trader, you want to know what is the interest levels of investors. Are you thinking like the market? Are you having a contrarian new view compared to the market? What is your idea about how the prices are going to move? Is it in sync with what the markets are expecting? Is the market bullish and therefore you want to go bullish too? Is the market bearish, therefore you want to go bearish too? All that will be provided by pending orders. If pending orders are large, with lower prices, that means there's still some bit of interest level left. It shows the liquidity status for that particular stock. It also shows up to five bid offer quotes. Okay, so it gives you a directional call on what is the price movement and transaction size of each quote, which is another powerful tool to use market data. Market data is therefore used by day traders, investment banking uh, dealers, treasury heads, because they are, for them, day trading, uh, treasury profits are profits that they have to show and get for their shareholder capital, right? But to get that data, it's quite expensive and there are separate payments that are made for them. It gives live data along with five best bid offer quotes and that's why market data has become such a big booming business in the hedge fund industry. Thank you so much.